What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my prize picks breakdown for UFC Nashville. We have Corey Sanhagen going against Rob Font. Poetic I need all the wins. Yeah. Harder than all that is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. And we are back breaking down some prize picks this week for UFC Nashville. A very, very good card in my opinion. We have 12 fights to work with here. A couple spots sticking out. I will be giving 10 prize picks plays this week. Uh, we kicked off the first week very hot, went 8 for 9. The second week went, I believe, 9 for 10. And then last week was probably the first down week thus far, going 5 and 4. Uh, which you know definitely want to do a lot better than that. My favorite play was probably that Poirier, um, the more on the significant strikes. I even beat the the line by like 10 strikes and he got head kicked in the second round. It is what it is, but let's try to get it back this week. And um, yeah, we'll see what we can come up with here. Uh, before we get started, if you guys can please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It is always much, much appreciated. If you guys are new to prize picks and you want to sign up, use that promo code at DFSBTN for a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. It helps me out, it helps you out, and you get some free money there. So check that out, Prize Picks. Use the promo code there, DFSBTN. All right, I say we get into it here. We're going to start with significant strikes. We're going to go and start with Ignacio Bahamondes, 83.5 significant strikes, and we are going to take the more here. So Bahamondes is, on paper, the highest volume striker um, on the card. And we have Corey Sanhagen on the card. We have Rob Font on the card. We have Billy Corantillo on the card. And Bahamon is on paper is outlanding, you know, all those guys. He lands 7.93 significant strikes per minute, which is just ridiculous. 7.93 times 15 minutes, that's 118, right? So I think this fight does go 15 minutes. And if it does, I mean, I think he probably crushes that in a fight where I think it does primarily stay standing. I do expect Ludovic Klein to go for takedowns. It's just I don't really see him going for... I don't see him completing those takedowns. Bahamondas has phenomenal takedown defense, great balance. I think this fight primarily plays out at range. And yeah, Bahamondas, I think he hits this pretty easily. So love uh, the Bahamondas more on the significant strikes. We're going to kick it off with that here. And then next we will go and stick with significant strikes. We're going to take uh, Tanner Bozer. We're going to take the more on significant strikes here. So it's sitting at 57 and a half. And this is probably the fight I'm like least looking forward to here. Um, but it's a fight where I expect them to stay standing for 15 minutes. You know, I don't really see, you know, I've heard some people say Tanner Bozer is going to wrestle. You know, he's probably not going to. I, I've never seen Tanner Bozer complete a takedown, and I don't think I ever will. Um, I expect these guys to, to stand and strike for 15 minutes. Should be kind of a... Yeah, I mean, I, I think this 57 and a half hits. I mean, this guy, Tanner Bozer, really solid volume for the heavyweight division, but he's coming down to, to light heavyweight. I think this fight goes 15, and um, yeah, I think he gets probably well over that in a decision. When I don't see either guy finishing as well. So another one I like, another fight that I think goes to decision, and uh, another fight where I like the more there. All right, moving on. Another, The last one on the significant strikes is going to be a less, and it is going to be... Jeremiah Wells, I'm taking the less on significant strikes. I mean, this guy hits so freaking hard. I mean, it's hard to imagine him hitting um, Carlson Harris in the face 35 times and, and Carlson Harris not going down. I actually think this fight does finish, and I think it finishes under one and a half rounds. And I, I even think this fight probably finishes in the uh, in the first round even. I think these guys are going to go after it. I think this is going to be an absolute car crash. And I think this uh, this less hits on on one Jeremiah Wells, 34 and a half. Give me the less on that one. All right, let's move on and let's go to fight time here. So we are going to start with, let's stick with Jeremiah Wells here. So this is one where, quite frankly, I don't think it makes um, much sense. So I wrote this down on, I believe it was Monday. I was writing my notes down for prize picks. I like to try to get early on, on some of these, right? And I believe, unless I w was reading it wrong, which I don't think that's the case, um, they had Wells fight time at 10 minutes. And I was like, yeah, I, I love that. And then as the week kind of went on, they like moved it to, to 10.5, which 
I don't really get because you take a look at the uh, the one and a half round line. It's like at a pick em right now. So I think this should probably be set at like seven and a half minutes. So for it to be at 10.5 just doesn't make a ton of sense to me whatsoever. So um, I know they both went to a decision in their last fight. But prior to that, all uh, six of their fights did finish and finish under one and a half rounds. So yeah, I mean, give me the less here on this one. It's one that that really does stick out. We'll see if it hits. My my goodness. Uh, moving on, another one that I like, another less here is going to be, if I can, they didn't take it off, did they? Uh, there it is. Just didn't have uh, her picture. So I'm going to take the less on the fight time for Tatiana Suarez here. Um, Jessica Andraz is showing up here, you know, on short notice. First of all, it's a terrible matchup to take on a full camp and then just taking it on short notice just shows me that, you know, Jessica Andraj probably is just showing up for a paycheck because who the heck takes a short notice fight against Tatiana Suarez? The answer should be nobody, but Andraj did apparently. I think it could be one takedown and, and it's over. We saw what Blanchfield did. Blanchfield got one takedown in the second round and Andraj looked for a way out. She quit in that fight. Andraj has been finished like eight times in her career so, yeah, I think Suarez finishes Andraj. I think it happens probably under one and a half rounds. And then if Andraj does win, it's probably like a first-round knockout or something like that. So I like the, the less here on fight time for Tatiana Suarez, 9.75 minutes. I don't think this fight reaches that third round. And then the last one is going to be um, the, the Jake Hadley fight time. I'll take the less here. Um, if Cody Durden wins, I, th I think it's on the more. But, you know, Jake Hadley is just going to be dangerous Anywhere this fight goes, whether it's on the feet, whether it's on the mat, I think that this less is going to hit in favor of Jake Hadley. Jake Hadley mixes it up well to the body. Cody Durden's coming in here on short notice. We've seen him slow down in the past. And on top of that, if this fight hits the mat, whether it's Hadley on top or Durden on top, you know, Hadley is going to be dangerous wherever this fight goes. Um, Black Belt and BJJ, Durden's been subbed three times. I think Hadley gets Durden out of there. Kind of the same case scenario here. Um, Diego Lopez on the less on fight time, same exact thing. You know, if Lopez wins, he's dangerous on the feet. He's dangerous on the mat. Gavin Tucker, 37 years old. Gavin Tucker, I question the the chin. I question, I don't want to say the submission defense. Gavin Tucker is a black belt, but I have seen him make mistakes on the mat. I've seen him give up his back all the time. I think Diego Lopez is another guy like Hadley that is going to be live for a finish. But I, I think it's strictly on the Lopez side, which is why I want to kind of tread lightly on both the Lopez and the Hadley less because I think the finish is on just the Lopez side and just the Hadley side. If if Gavin Tucker wins, I see it being by decision. Same thing with, with Cody Durden. So ones I, I don't love there, but I do like the Wells one. I think both guys can finish. And then I do like the Suarez one. I think both ladies can finish in that one. Let's go to the takedowns. Um, we only have three options here, and I will give one. So the one I will give is going to be the Amabayev. And it's going to be the more on the takedowns. I mean, this guy can wrestle. This guy can grapple. Um, I think he goes out there and, and gets you know multiple takedowns throughout this fight. I think this fight does get in, at least to the third round. I can see a late finish for Amabayev, but um, I think he does hit this um, here. I think I can see him getting like one in each round type situation, something like that. Or if Ode does stand back up, he's probably going right back down. I think the the two hits pretty cleanly here. At the very worst, it probably pushes, but you know I think it does go more. And then we'll touch on some fantasy score here. There is a couple that stick out. Um, the first one, and these are high scores. Um, Sanhagen, 122.5. That is a high score, but I'm still going to take the more here. Um, just because, man, I, I think this is a great matchup for Corey Sanhagen. Rob Font taking this fight on, on very short notice here. I expect Sanhagen to go out there and just put on a clinic. I mean, this guy lands so much volume. You're getting 0 0.6 points for every significant strike. I mean, I think Sanhagen can go up there and, and get honestly like upwards of like 150 significant strikes i think a late finish is in play i think takedowns are in play i think knockdowns are in play um you know i think Corey standing can go out there and put up a very very big score across um across 15 minutes there and then uh yeah same thing with like the suarez like i i don't mind suarez the more you know 109.5 fantasy score I think she probably finishes this in the first round which in the first round you get a 100 point bonus um, so on top of that, you know, I think she can definitely land some significant strikes. Um, and then I think she probably finishes Andrade in that, in that first round. I think it could be like one takedown. The fight's over. 
shortly after. But I could see her mixing in some strikes up until then. I, I think this is another one that is a very high score, but it's a score that I think she does cover and, and go more there. I think she puts up a pretty big score this week. And then the last one I'll give is going to be the Ignacy Bahamondes, um, the 94 and a half. Give me the more. Another high score here, but we talked about this guy's volume. You know, the on paper, you know, this guy is landing the most significant strikes per minute on a card where we have just crazy volumed guys. On top of that, you do get points for stuffing a takedown on prize picks. Um, I believe it's three points for every takedown you stuff. You know, those could add up because I do expect Ludwig Klein to go out there and, and shoot for takedowns and get them stuffed. We saw Bob Munda's stuff like had to been like 10, 10 plus takedowns against Roosevelt Roberts. That's 30 points right there. So, um, yeah, I think takedown defense, significant strikes especially. And, um, yeah, don't see a finish, nothing like that. But, you know, if this goes 15 minutes, which I do think it does, those strikes are going to add up. And I think this does hit the more there. But, yeah, guys, that is about it. I gave, I think, 10 or 11 this week. So some plays definitely sticking out. Um, if you guys could leave a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, comment down your favorite prize picks play. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I'll have to – maybe I'll, I can reconsider something as well. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you guys like in the comments. And then also, if you guys have not, sign up on prize picks. Use that promo code DFSBTN for a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Helps me, helps you. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to this week. Best of luck, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. See you.